Hello everyone, welcome to another amazing video. If you enjoy the content, I ask that you subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification bell so you don't miss the upcoming parts and new videos. Now, without further ado, let's get into today's video. Are you ready? Let's go. The story begins at the 4th Academy in the city of Su. Several students meet on the day they will finally become players. Shui Jinlong, who is the Academy's director up to this point, instructs that the system will be in charge of deciding which class each student will become right after they enter the formation. Among the possible classes, he says they can be a great swordsman, a sturdy knight, an agile assassin, or even a powerful mage. Either way, fate will take care of deciding what each one will be, but they all clearly have the potential to be great individuals. For now, that's all. Then, a large circle on the ground that covers the entire area where the students are starts to glow, activating the transfer formation. This is when we meet Chiao Yu, with a youthful appearance, who reincarnated 18 years ago and is happy that this day has finally arrived. He further explains that this world is called Kaiji Star, a parallel world that is quite similar to planet Earth. But unlike planet Earth, the artificially developed inner world descended, threatening all the peace of that time. On this planet with a rather somber appearance, several dungeons begin to emerge everywhere. Still, about this world, humans upon turning 18 receive special abilities through the transfer formation, and with these abilities, they start to clear dungeons, killing monsters, thus leveling up and gaining attributes to become even stronger. Very focused, Chao Yu receives a system notification informing him that this is his first time entering the inner world and if he would like to receive his class already. He then, full of confidence, just says yes, and in his thoughts he pleads for his ancestors to give him a great class in this reincarnation. The system then starts to load the draw. Suddenly, a huge skull-shaped aura appears around Chao Yu. The system then congratulates him, saying that he received a secret class. Chao Yu begins to look at the huge aura around him and how powerful it is. The system then says that the class is the necromancer. He then starts to smile, as he couldn't believe how insane the class he had acquired was. He further explains that the necromancer class is extremely rare, and that at most two people have managed to acquire it so far. With the necromancer's staff, it is possible to summon numerous high-level undead directly from the gates of hell. The aura of this class is so powerful that it's as if several demons were around the user, and as long as he has mana, his power knows no limits. Chao Yu then becomes happy, as in general, if a user receives a secret class, they are automatically stronger than all other users. That said, he starts to navigate the system to consult his attributes. Already on the attribute screen, he sees all the information he needs at the moment, such as his strength at 10, defense at 6, agility at 9, spirit 0, mana 10 out of a maximum of 10, life 10 out of a maximum of 10, and 0 out of 10 in experience. Chao Yu then becomes desperate when he sees that his spirit is at 0. He questions whether a necromancer doesn't have any spirit. He then falls to the ground indignant at the attributes he just saw. After all, the initial attributes are distributed according to the class he won, and the maximum point in each status is 10. Therefore, he knows that the spirit attribute is the most important attribute for a class that consumes mana. Knowing this, how could he fight having less than five points in this attribute? Chao Yu then begins to cry, knowing that there is nothing he can do. Everything is lost, and even if his talent were of an S rank, it would be useless, as the spirit points are zero. Remembering that talents are divided into seven classes, the worst being rank F and the best rank S. Suddenly, the system starts drawing a talent. Chao Yu begins to overflow with power. The system then notifies that the talent he won is called Mage's Heart, has an unknown rank, and its effect is, receive 10 attribute points. The passive effect of this talent is, attribute points will be given to the user as he kills some enemy with physical attacks. The active effect of this talent is, the player can make all his attributes equal to others, remembering that the user can choose only one attribute to be linked to the active effect. Chao Yu is ecstatic, not believing that all this is true. After all, receiving attribute points is practically impossible. Normally, a user only receives attribute points when leveling up, and even then needs to train a lot for it. He still can't believe that with this passive all he needs to do is kill enemies with physical attacks to gain the attributes and even being able to choose only one attribute to distribute. He just needs to choose the highest one. Full of confidence, Chao Yu says that he could, for example, use his talent at that moment, making all his attributes 10. A newbie with 10 in all attributes is more terrifying than a monster never seen before. Still looking at his attributes, 
Chao Yu begins to wonder if he should wait for his strength to reach a thousand, or maybe even a million before using this ability. Just imagine, a necromancer with a million points in everything. He could create an invincible army. He then smiles and doesn't forget that, for the passive to activate, the enemy must be killed through physical damage, so strength is extremely important to him. Without a second thought, he raises his arm and orders the system to put 10 points in the strength attribute. The system then complies with his request. Chao Yu then observes how his attribute screen is. Now his strength is different. Previously 10, now it's at 20 points, with the title of oppressive vigor. In front, he then, happy with all this, just says that now he just needs to make his registration and start a beginner mission. After all, only after completing this mission will he finally receive his class. After all this, a tornado of energy surrounds Chao Yu, taking him to the beginner mission. He is then teleported to a totally different place, and in this place, he sees a portal and a girl in front of him. This girl then greets him, saying that her name is Elaine and that she was a guide. With that, she asks how she could help him. Chao Yu is surprised by how beautiful Elaine is, even questioning if she was really just an NPC. Then he just says he wants to register to do his beginner mission. She then summons a gift and hands it to Chao Yu, saying that it was his beginner's gift. Chao Yu then opens the gift and is surprised by what he gets. He receives an old cloak, a staff, and an F-rank skill book that summons skeletons for battle. All items gained in this gift are beginner level. He starts to observe his body the way it turned out after receiving these items, noticing that the cloak is practically an accessory, and that the book is currently useless since he has zero in the spirit attribute. But his eyes shine when looking at the staff. It had a beautiful appearance and combined with his 20 points of strength, he would be able to hit many monsters out there. Elaine watches him without understanding why he was so happy. Then with the staff in hand, Chao Yu asks Elaine what his mission would be. She then, with an air of mystery, says that he must escape from the foggy cave inside the portal. Elaine then begins to explain that for this mission, he needs to be very careful. She makes it clear not to kill any skeleton soldiers, and that he only needs to find the fastest way to escape from there. When she was finishing her explanations, she looks from one side to the other, and realizes that he had already entered the mission before she even started her explanations. Chao Yu then, full of confidence, crosses the portal and finds himself in a place full of skeletons on the ground. At the same time, he looks back and wonders if Elaine was saying something he didn't hear. But he realizes that now it doesn't make a difference, since he was inside the mission, and it also doesn't make a difference. Since in a beginner mission, it's theoretically not going to be difficult, but he keeps wondering why that place had so many scattered skulls. Suddenly he hears a noise coming from behind him. He turns around quickly, scared, asking whose noise that was. It's a common monster. Level 1 Skeleton Soldier. It has 20 life points, 5 strength, 0 defense, and 1 agility. Chia Yu then holds his staff in his hands and positions himself to attack the skeleton soldier who is about to attack him. Then with just one precise hit with his staff, he defeats the enemy whose head is separated from the body while catching fire in green color. Chao Yu then wonders if he really won, and that fighting without using magic is really difficult. Then the system notifies Chao Yu that he had gained another attribute point, and three experience points for having finished an enemy using physical attack. In addition, he also gained a passive skill for having defeated his first monster with just one attack. The passive skill he received is rank A, named Miracle of Power. He can't believe his luck in receiving an A-rank skill right off the bat. In his system, Chao Yu checks more details about this passive skill and sees that its effect is to double all the user's strength points at the time of the attack. He concludes that strength determines how much damage will be dealt to the enemy, and defense determines how much damage will be reduced when attacked by an enemy. So, one point of strength equals one point of damage. The same goes for the other attributes. Therefore, if an enemy has no defense at all, Chao Yu's attack will deal 42 damage with the skill that doubles his strength when attacking. He found this skill too strong. Suddenly, a hand emerges from the ground, and when Chao Yu turns around, he realizes that it's another skeleton soldier coming to attack him. Chao Yu, with a serious expression, thinks that his initial focus is to finish his mission first. At that moment, a horde of skeleton soldiers advances towards him, all with the same attributes as the first soldier he defeated. Chao Yu then waits until all the soldiers get close with their swords. Then, with just one strike, he finishes all four skeleton soldiers that had attacked him. As the skeleton's heads roll on the ground, the system notifies Chao Yu that he just gained four more attribute points and twelve experience points for defeating four enemies using physical attack. Chao Yu then notices his aura increasing. 
He was leveling up at that moment, and with all the gains he had so far, his strength was already at 30 points. Something surreal for a beginner, since having 10 points is already remarkable. After that, Xiao Yu looks thoughtful and starts to question if those skeleton soldiers were there for the purpose of him farming levels, because if that's the case, it's too overpowered. Suddenly a rumble comes from the ground, a new warrior emerging from beneath the earth. This time, it was a skeleton captain, a common level monster with 50 life points, 15 strength, 20 defense, and 1 agility. Xiao Yu is surprised by the 15 strength points of the new enemy, and says he can't be hit by him at all. But he charges forward with his spear, already imagining that since the enemy has only one agility point, he just needs to attack first. Xiao Yu then attacks the enemy with everything he has, but the skeleton captain defends with his shield, and then strikes back at Xiao Yu, who barely dodges as this attack ends up destroying the ground. Xiao Yu is then startled by the fact that the skeleton captain attacked while still defending, and not only that, but this attack was strong enough to break the ground. Next, the skeleton captain opens his guard to deliver an attack. Xiao Yu then crouches and realizes that there is an opening to attack. With that, he attacks the middle of the skeleton with everything he has, knocking it to the ground. Continuing the attack, he jumps on top of the skeleton that is still lying on the ground and realizes that this was his chance to finish it. Chao Yu then screams as he attacks with all his might, saying he wants to see how it will defend against this next attack. Not giving the skeleton captain time to react, the blow hits with great power, instantly killing the skeleton captain. The system then gives three more attribute points and ten experience points for defeating the skeleton captain using physical attack. Chao Yu is surprised at how this opponent was much more difficult than the common skeleton. Chao Yu then, with a confident look, wonders how other players are managing to progress in the beginner mission if even he, with A-rank skills, is having difficulty. He then picks up a glowing ball of energy that was on the ground and remembers that the academy director taught that when killing a monster, there is a chance it will drop a core and this core has a chance to randomly drop something. So he wants to see what will drop from this skeleton captain's core. The system then presents his reward, a set of skeleton gloves, a usable item of rank D. After use, the next attack will have a 100% chance of being a critical attack. Chao Yu then laments that it's not a permanent item, it will be lost right after use. Then, a giant horde of skeletons emerges from beneath the ground. Chao Yu then turns around and wonders if more skeletons are really coming to attack him. He charges at the skeletons, but realizes that this time the number of skeletons is increasing greatly. Still charging at the skeletons, he remembers that, even though he is now at level 2, he only has a mere 20 hit points, so any damage he takes can be fatal. Chao Yu then finishes off each one, gaining one attribute point and three experience points for each finish. In the end, he advances to level 3. After finishing off all the enemies, still wielding his staff against the skeletons, he is glad that at least they have only one agility point, so they are extremely slow. After finishing them all, he decides to check his current attributes. With the attribute system open, he sees that his level is now 3, with 46 strength points, 6 defense points, 9 agility points, 0 spirit points, 80 mana, 30 health, and lacks 10 experience points for level 4. Meanwhile, outside the school, several students are discussing the classes they acquired. One of them became a warrior, saying that their ancestors must be proud. The other students begin to wonder why the principal has not announced anything yet since apparently everyone has already left. Two students comment that it is not possible for anyone to fail in this beginner mission. How could someone take so long in something so simple? After all, even though the soldiers were relatively strong, they had no speed at all. So it was just a matter of running until the mission was completed. They also say that if someone failed such an easy mission, they would laugh until they cried. A friend of Chao Yu starts to worry about his delay, not understanding why he has not completed this beginner mission yet. Back to Chiao Yu, he had finished off all the enemies and didn't know what to do next. He was confused as to why he hadn't received any notifications saying that the mission was over. Suddenly, a sinister voice from beyond appears, questioning how Chiao Yu dared to do all that. Chiao Yu is startled but remains alert. All the skull heads that were on the ground start to float. He then realizes that all of them are flying towards one place. Soon after, Chiao Yu realizes that they are all combining, turning into one giant skull. The ground begins to crack with such energy that surrounded the skulls. Suddenly, a giant three-headed skull emerges, exuding a devastating aura. It was the mission boss, the Skeleton King. Its level was 10, it had 400 hit points. For some reason, it had entered the battle injured as its total life should have been 500. 45 strength points, 
60 defense points, 1 agility point, and the ability bone explosion. Chao Yu, totally scared, can't believe what he's seeing. He wonders why there was such a scary boss in a beginner mission. Does the academy want all beginners to die? The boss then, with all its power, raises its weapon to strike Chao Yu, who is still shocked by what he is seeing. The mission boss then delivers a powerful blow against Chao Yu, who manages to dodge successfully, causing the blow to hit the ground with force, destroying the area. After dodging the blow, Chao Yu realizes he was very lucky to have dodged that weapon, because if it had hit him directly, it would have been instant death for sure. Seeing how scary that boss was, Chao Yu begins to realize that despite being extremely powerful, that giant skeleton was not very agile, which became his only advantage against that boss. Another problem would be the 60 defense points of this boss. Chao Yu is not sure if his blow would be enough to break this defense. Chao Yu then goes all out against the boss and delivers a powerful blow, causing 32 damage. Chao Yu is then surprised that, although it was only 32 damage, at least it caused some damage, since there was a great chance of the damage being zero due to the opponent's high defense. This gives him hope, since as long as he successfully attacks the boss, even if he needs to hit more than 10 blows, he will at least win in the end. Chao Yu then delivers several simultaneous blows with his staff, and since the boss had no agility to dodge, it receives all of them. The boss then begins to destroy the entire area with relentless blows. Chao Yu, dodging all the blows, begins to think that maybe that boss was there just to scare the other players. But anyway, that boss still had 200 hit points, so it would soon be defeated. Chao Yu then widens his eyes, impressed with what he was seeing in front of him. The boss, with enormous power overflowing from his body, begins to speak, saying that he has protected the Mist Cave for many years, but has never witnessed a player who killed to get to where he was. The boss also says that he would not be vulnerable at that moment if fewer of the skeleton soldiers that were part of his army had died. Still staring at Chao Yu, the boss says he cannot believe how a newbie like him could somehow break such a powerful defense like his, and because of that, he would not allow Chao Yu to leave alive. Chao Yu is then thrown back with such power overflowing from the boss, he begins to realize that the boss seemed to be getting even stronger. Power starts to overflow from the boss's body, and then he charges at Chao Yu. The protagonist then realizes that the boss is faster than before. The boss then delivers a powerful blow against Chao Yu. He manages to dodge, but the ground is completely destroyed with such power. Chao Yu starts to sweat from how worried he became in that situation, saying that now it will not be possible to break the boss's defense anymore, and that he needs to somehow find a way to restrict his movements. At this moment, even more energy starts to overflow from the boss. Green and black lightning starts to come out of his body as he charges at Chao Yu. The protagonist then notices a boulder behind the boss that is about to fall. The boss then, as he approaches the protagonist, delivers another powerful blow against him. But Chao Yu manages to dodge successfully. Chao Yu then positions himself next to the boss as he dodges his blow. He looks at him and starts to provoke the boss to attack him again. The boss, in a state of fury, charges at the protagonist, attacking with his weapon. The protagonist, unable to dodge in time, tries to defend and dodge at the same time, but the blow was too powerful, taking 26 hit points from Chao Yu and throwing him far away. Still in the air, Chao Yu is impressed with such power and cannot believe that even the glancing blow was almost enough to kill him instantly, as he was left with only four hit points. The powerful boss, still in a state of fury, does not give the protagonist time to react and charges again to deliver another blow. Chiao Yu then panics knowing that if he takes another blow like that, his death is certain. The boss then attacks with all his might, destroying the entire area, but Chiao Yu manages to dodge this blow in time. The blow was so powerful that it shattered a huge rock that was there. Due to the boss's powerful blow, the rocks that flew from the destruction of that rock began to fall on the boss, causing 70 damage to him and forming a huge explosion, while Chiao Yu managed to move away unscathed from the blow. The boss then begins to try to get out from under the rocks that fell on him and becomes even more furious. At this moment he has 129 hit points after everything that happened. The worried protagonist looks at that boss and is sure that he can no longer delay that fight. He needs to find a way to finish him off before the boss gets up again. Chao Yu then takes a big leap towards the boss, who is still stuck between the rocks. He activates the item he had won, Skeleton Gloves, which provides double critical damage for the next attack. He then gathers immense power in his hand. The boss sees such power coming towards him and despairs, but now it's too late. 
the protagonist cuts the boss in half as if a huge light were piercing through him, causing immense destruction and 132 damage to the boss. The destruction power of the protagonist's critical blow was gigantic. The fire that surrounded the boss gradually disappeared with his defeat. A portal appears in front of him, and at that moment, a system notification arrives, congratulating Chao Yu for completing the beginner mission and officially becoming one of the players of the other world. In addition to congratulating the protagonist, it also gave him 30 status points. While energy overflowed around and black flames engulfed the boss's ground that he had just finished off, the system also notifies that he gained three levels for his first death. Chao Yu then realizes that the energy overflowing in front of him was from the boss, more specifically the Skeleton King's ring that he also gained by defeating the boss. Chao Yu is happy to see that it is also possible to gain items by defeating bosses. The beautiful Skull King's ring had a skull shape, was rank C. Its effect is, when equipped, the damage of the player's first normal attack will be increased by 50%, and it has a cooldown time between uses of 24 hours. It has no class restrictions. Chao Yu then smiles seeing that beautiful ring and says that, although it is not a powerful item like the glove he just lost, he has an advantage that is being able to use it unlimitedly, as long as he respects the cooldown time. Unlike the glove that after using once, the item disappears. He also comments that if he were to sell a rank C equipment piece, the price would probably be in the thousands. So, he definitely got very lucky this time. At this moment he looks to the side and remembers something the system said, your first death, and wonders if that means the Skeleton King died for the first time, meaning no one had killed him until that moment. Still confused, he questions if all that is true. How did the other players complete the mission without killing the boss? He says that in the end, it doesn't matter as he walks towards the portal. At this moment, the protagonist has the Disciple title, for being level 5, with 76 strength points, 6 defense points, 9 agility points, 0 spirit points, 200 mana, and 50 health. His talent is Mage's Heart, with an unknown level, the ability Miracle of Power ranked A, and his equipment is now the Skeleton King's Ring ranked C. The protagonist then, passing through the portal, is teleported back to the academy along with all the other players who also completed the beginner mission. Chao Yu's friend, happy to see his friend coming out safe and sound from the mission, runs and hugs Chao Yu, showing himself very happy to see him well. The protagonist then, embarrassed, asks what he was doing hugging him like that in the middle of the crowd. His friend then asks what happened to Chao Yu inside the mission. He asks why it took him so long to complete that mission, which was actually quite easy, and because of the delay, he imagined that the worst had happened. Chiao Yu is surprised by this and asks if everyone there completed the beginner mission quickly. His friend then says yes, that it had been three hours since the last person, besides Chiao Yu, left the mission. Chiao Yu then just says that's okay then and asks his friend which class he chose. His friend then replies that he got the mage class and starts waving his wand, reciting an Avada Kedavra jokingly with Chiao Yu. Chiao Yu begins to reflect on all of this and wonders if everyone really went to the same world. At that moment, the player monitor arrives, laughing, saying that Chiao Yu was the last to leave. The monitor also tells Chiao Yu that he is just another embroidered pillow. That what good was it to be pretty, if in the end all that matters is talent, and he just says to Chiao Yu, do you know what my class is? In a mocking tone. Chiao Yu then becomes worried about why the monitor is picking a fight with him. Then the academy director arrives, informing that everyone there had been officially registered and announcing that the next day, the whole class would participate in the beginner training. After saying that, he asks everyone to introduce themselves, saying what their classes and talents are. After all, there's nothing better than everyone getting to know each other. One student shouts excitedly that he chose the soldier class and that his talent was rank D, while another shouts that he chose the assassin class, and another disappointedly says that his talent was rank F and that he was in serious trouble because of it. Here comes the turn of the beautiful Zhao Ziwei to introduce herself. She says she chose the healer class, was at level 2, had 3 strength points, 6 defense points, 5 agility points, and 6 spirit points. All the students go crazy, enamored by this student's beauty. Now it's the turn of the lovely Zuo Yu to introduce herself. She summons a shield spell and says she chose the paladin class, and her talent was rank B. Her level was 2. She had 5 strength points, 9 defense points, 6 agility points, and 3 spirit points. Mafei, who was the class monitor, then introduces himself by swinging his sword, saying he chose the swordsman class. 
He was already at level 3 with 9 strength points, 6 defense points, 8 agility points, and 4 spirit points, in addition to having a rank B talent. The other students are impressed by Mafei's attributes, saying that with just a sword and a wine pot, a phrase often used in martial arts novels where the hero starts with just a sword and a wine pot, he already has a certain future. They also reinforce that the swordsman class is extremely powerful in the other world, and he was certainly blessed by the heavens to receive it. The director, upon hearing the students say their classes and attributes, begins to think that that class has good students. After all, someone with a rank B talent can already be considered a genius. He then calls Chao Yu to introduce himself to the class. The protagonist then, with an extremely powerful aura emanating from his body, reveals that his class is the necromancer. He says that at that moment it is not convenient for him to reveal what his talent is, at least not for now. After all, he himself doesn't know what that talent is, Chao Yu thought. The director, excited by what he just heard, says it is not possible to have gotten the necromancer class. It is a hidden class. All the students are shocked to hear this. They couldn't believe that a student actually got the necromancer class, and that there was even a necromancer who eliminated an entire syndicate alone. The class monitor, who was still in shock hearing that, begins to think that it was not possible. He got the necromancer class right away, and he begins to think that after all, that was not an advantage. Even though it is a hidden class, they are still mages, and mages are famous for being fragile, always afraid of someone getting close to them. He further explains that necromancers specifically are even weaker than normal people because of the many years they spend in contact with the undead. They take a long time to cast an invocation spell and usually don't have teammates to protect them. Additionally, he said that assassins, swordsmen, and similar classes are usually the best friends of necromancers. The monitor still laughs, thinking that Xiao Yu didn't reveal the rank of his talent. So it's probably such a mediocre talent that he preferred not to reveal it to avoid being mocked in the classroom. Unlike the class monitor, the other members of the class are surprised to see that Chao Yu is not arrogant or annoying, that this would probably be the attitude of a true genius, that even though he got a hidden class, he is still modest. Another student then says that this must be the difference between a genius and other people, reinforces that even Chao Yu's personality is centered, and that if he had gotten a hidden class like Chao Yu did, he probably wouldn't be able to stay calm like him. Chao Yu then smiles, but with a worried expression he begins to think that, Despite being a necromancer, he can't cast a single spell. So with that, he is just a little stronger than a normal person. That in the end, he wasn't even sure if he would be able to protect himself in the beginner training, so there's no reason for him to make a fuss about it. And he stops to think about what his classmates will do when they find out that he can't summon a single undead monster, even being a necromancer. The director then becomes pleased with his thoughts regarding Chao Yu, that probably after completing the beginner training, he will be able to enter the best universities in the whole nation. After everyone introduces themselves, the director informs that the class is over, and that everyone could go home to rest, as there is a new training the next day. Chao Yu's friend runs up to him, hugging him and saying how amazing he is, and how jealous he is of him for getting the necromancer class. Chao Yu's friend, Yang Viangoi, then shows his status. He chose the mage class and is at level 2, has 5 strength points, 6 defense points, 3 agility points, and eight spirit points. He also says that these attributes are probably not that bad. Chao Yu then says with a worried expression that the important thing is hard work and that only he can compensate for any other weakness, but says this sadly knowing that he has zero points in spirit. Chao Yu then notices that his friend's attribute points are all in single digits, less than 10. So having 76 points in one of the stats makes him practically a divine creature, probably. Chao Yu arrives at his home, the protagonist begins to reflect on his habit of always saying, I'm home upon arriving at home, even though there is no one there. After all, his parents disappeared a long time ago. Seeing a picture of when he was a child, and his parents were still present. In Chao Yu's mind, his parents did the same when they arrived home when he was little. In that world, his parents were good and kind people. He further explained that when he was just six years old, his parents said they were going on a long journey to the capital. But soon after that, his parents disappeared suddenly and mysteriously, leaving Chiao Yu orphaned in his childhood. Chiao Yu continues to look at his photo with his parents and wonders, where did they go? After all, it's been 12 years. The protagonist, with a serious expression, says he needs to get into the capital's university at all costs to find out the truth behind all this. 
Then comes the next day, and all the students are gathered in front of the principal, who says he has only one request for today's training. And with a serious expression, he explains that if there is any student who thinks they will not be able to get through this training, they should remember to retreat immediately. He also emphasizes that even if someone fails the training because of this, it is better than dying on this process. Everyone is shocked to hear him say this. The principal then continues to explain that no one needs to be nervous. But speaking in general, the beginner's universe is not so dangerous and hardly causes the death of players, but still, there are exceptions. With a mysterious expression, the principal explains that there was a catastrophic incident where a single beginner's world caused the extermination of an entire class of 40 people and they all disappeared without a trace. He continues to explain that it is a scary world, although there are not many details, that until that moment no one knows what kind of beginner's world it could be. The only information they knew was that the beginner's world was called Nightmare Village. All the students are frightened by this story. The principal then smiles and emphasizes that there is no reason to be worried. As long as everyone leaves the other world on time, no one will be in danger. He then asks everyone to prepare, that as soon as the timer reaches zero, it was at nine seconds, it will be time for everyone to depart for the other world. All the players fix their eyes attentively on the timer as the time goes down until it finally reaches zero. It was time for everyone to depart for the other world. The principal notifies that the training of the beginners had begun while a powerful dark energy surrounded Chao Yu. That was the energy that would transport them to the other world. Then, all are teleported to the other world. By this dark energy, the students are amazed by the journey and observe that they landed in a village. While Chao Yu seriously observed his surroundings, the other players began to question if this was the so-called other world that they needed to complete and that it was a very mysterious place. Mafei then asks everyone to relax, that regardless of what happens there, he will protect them. Right ahead, at the entrance gate, it is possible to see someone standing there, although they cannot see their entire body, just their legs. All the players decide to enter the village, guided by Mafei. He tells everyone that as long as they follow him, the success of everyone is guaranteed. While everyone follows him, Mafei begins to mock Chiao Yu in thought, saying that it does not matter if he is a necromancer, that means nothing. Mafei still reinforces in his thoughts that he is the most suitable to lead that class of players, and that, in the end, he is the strongest man in the entire room. Chao Yu, also immersed in his thoughts, makes a serious expression, finding that world strange. After all, what kind of beginner's world was that? And why until that moment there had been no system notification informing anything? Suddenly, someone appears behind everyone just saying, what a pity, out loud, making all the players turn to him. It was a being with long white beards, dark glasses, wearing old clothes, and with bluish skin. This blue being says that everyone there is quite unlucky, and that it was a pity they were all so young. Everyone assumes a defensive position, and Mafei then asks if that being was an NPC. Chao Yu asks the blue being what he meant by, everyone is unlucky to be there? Then the blue being, making a mysterious expression, congratulates them for arriving in the nightmare village. As he says this, several lightning bolts form in the sky. After that, finally comes a system notification, telling all the players that this was the nightmare village and that its difficulty level was rank S for beginners. The system also explains that the difficulty of the beginner's training is calculated separately from the other worlds that a rank S beginner is equivalent to approximately a rank E in the normal world. And the requirement to complete the training was to find the secret at the core of the nightmare village and also to leave there alive. All the students panic upon remembering that name, Nightmare Village, the world that killed 40 people without leaving a trace and that no one had been able to pass through until that moment. Many of the players begin to run desperately out of the village, saying they just want to go home and that they no longer want to play that. Mafei then shouts asking everyone to calm down, that he would definitely lead everyone out of that village. Meanwhile, Chao Yu reflects on the situation, thinking that this was a world of levels and that everyone needs to at least be in the initial stage. If everyone is still mere disciples, how are they going to get through this? In short, the levels in other worlds are divided into disciple, initial stage, intermediate stage, and final stage. Disciples are between level 1 and level 10. Initial stages are between level 11 and level 20. Intermediate stage is between level 21 and level 30. And above that is the final stage, king and devotee, which is the highest of all. As the players approach the gate to pass through it, 
They try to flee and are thrown back by a barrier. Everyone starts to question what is happening. Why is there a barrier preventing them from passing through the gate? The blue being with dark glasses then asks them to stop struggling and further explains that once they enter the nightmare village, they can never leave unless they complete the mission. The players then begin to despair while one says that everyone there will die and that there is nothing to do in a place like that. Another says that he comes from a rich family and that he doesn't want to die so young. Mafe, seeing everyone's despair, asks them to calm down, that they should put their trust in him, that he will lead everyone out of that nightmare village. Chao Yu then, with a serious expression, begins to think that he understands why the class of players before them was all erased, that the mission's goal is to find the secret at the core of the nightmare village. He also suspects this blue being with dark glasses, but until that moment he does not seem to be a bad person, so probably he is not an enemy. The blue being walks among the players saying that there is no reason for them to despair, that in the end, since they were all there, maybe with time everyone will become quite comfortable with the place. Ma Fei then has an idea and asks the blue being if he wants everyone to relax as a way to face that situation with confidence. The blue being then looks with a terrifying gaze at Ma Fei and says that was not it. He meant that since everyone was there, it was just to accept that they will die. All the players widen their eyes after hearing that. The blue being then laughs and apologizes to everyone for the joke. He is the chief of the nightmare village. His name is Wogan. He then informs that there are two requirements to be able to live in the Nightmare Village. The village chief then explains to everyone that any player can live in any house as long as it is empty, but no one can, under absolutely no circumstances, touch the black stones on the doors of the houses. In addition, everyone must return to their houses before dark, closing all doors and windows. The village chief also makes it explicit that after that time, no one can open either the windows or the doors under any circumstances. Chao Yu, after hearing all those instructions, asks the village chief why no one can go out at night. The village chief then, making a grim face, says only that everyone will find out when the night comes. Time passed, and it began to get dark in the nightmare village. All the players decide to obey the instructions of the village master, dividing the whole class into four groups of eleven players each. Each group then chooses an empty house to spend the night, and following the orders of the village chief, they lock all the doors and windows of each house. Inside the house, Zuoyu, the paladin with a rank B talent, advises her whole group to rest on the second floor that night just for safety, and everyone agrees, including Chao Yu, who is part of this group. On the second floor, the healer Zhao Ziyue is talking to Chao Yu, and with all her charm, she asks him that if there is any danger that night, he protect her with his strength. Seductively, she also reminds him that she is the healer of the group, so she could provide a lot of life for him. With everyone seeing this scene, the paladin calls Zhao Ziyue's attention, saying that she is a shameless pervert and that everyone in the house was seeing her throwing herself at Chao Yu. The two then start to argue, the healer saying that if she is okay with it, what does it matter what others think? She starts calling the paladin a plank. The paladin retorts saying that she thinks looking like a cow was something to be proud of by any chance. The healer retorts again that it is better than being a plank. Chao Yu is speechless with the argument of the two. The paladin, already nervous with the healer, says that she only has those breasts because she was fat. The healer is filled with hatred with that comment, while Chao Yu notices that there is a player looking out the window to the outside. This player keeps staring outside, when suddenly he starts crying calling the name of his beloved grandmother and saying that he missed her a lot. His supposed grandmother, who was outside, replies that she missed her grandson a lot, and that it was very cold outside, and that the place was very scary. She then asks her dear grandson to open the window so that she can enter and be safe with him. The player, without thinking twice, runs to open the window for his supposed grandmother. Chao Yu, seeing that the player opened the window, even knowing the order of the village chief, starts to scream desperately, saying that it was not his grandmother. The supposed grandmother then makes an evil face. Her eyes turn red and she lunges at the player who opened the window, trying to devour him. The player, still thinking that it was his grandmother, starts to ask why she is trying to devour him. Then Yang Xiangxi, Chao Yu's friend, aims his spear at the evil being and recites the spell, Sand Prison, causing a strong sand to imprison that being, who is doing everything to devour the player who opened the window. Chao Yu's friend then asks that player to quickly move away from that evil being, before he loses strength and can no longer hold her with the sand spell. The player starts to run desperately towards the group, while that being began to transform into a new creature coming out of the sand prison. 
Now this being becomes a level 3 nightmare monster with 50 life, 25 strength points, 5 defense points, 25 agility points, and has the talent, charm. Seeing all the attributes of that monster, all the players enter into despair, saying that even that monster looking more like a demon was a common monster. So even common monsters are probably very powerful in a rank S beginner's world. The nightmare monster then charges at Chao Yu's friend. This friend then enters into despair, but still jokes with the nightmare monster, saying that if it devoured all that fatty meat, it would get high blood pressure. His life is hanging by a thread and he is making jokes in the face of danger. As he approaches, a barrier appears preventing the nightmare from crossing. It was the paladin who jumped in front of him, blocking the monster's charge with her defensive power. The paladin then instructs the team, asking Chao Yu's friend to run away and asking the healer to heal her, since the nightmare's charge was causing 10 damage per second to the paladin, even though she was blocking it. She then also asks Chao Yu to use his necromancer magic and summon the undead to attack this nightmare monster. The healer and Chao Yu agree with the instructions. The healer begins to recite her healing magic to support the paladin and uses her spell, healing 10 life per second from the paladin, while the nightmare's charge continues to cause 10 damage per second. The paladin, with a serious look, begins to think that, despite everything, if everyone works as a team, that nightmare monster will be easily defeated, that all they needed to do at that moment was wait for Chiao Yu to summon an undead. Before finishing her sentence, Chiao Yu appears charging at her side and attacking the nightmare monster with everything, using his staff. She is surprised to see him going for a physical attack with so much power. Chao Yu then charges at the nightmare, delivering a fatal blow to it. His friend is surprised by what he is seeing, saying that a staff is not meant to be used in that way, as if it were a sword, and that if he continues so close to the nightmare monster, it would be the end of him. Chao Yu's powerful blow then pierces the head of the nightmare, causing instant death to the monster. All the players are left open-mouthed witnessing that unusual scene. One of the players, not believing what she saw, asks how a nightmare monster with 50 life was killed with a single blow. Another player asks if all necromancers are so powerful. The players then approach where the nightmare was defeated and realize that its body disappeared, leaving a black stone in its place. The paladin, surprised to see that, says that the symbol on that stone is identical to the symbol on the door. But as the monster and the door are from the nightmare village, then it would not be strange for the two to have the same symbol. Chao Yu clenches his fist and begins to observe that at that moment there was something strange, that it would probably be a bug. He was noticing that even finishing a nightmare with a single melee blow, he did not receive status bonuses for that finish. The paladin, observing how Chao Yu was strange, asks him if he noticed anything different at that moment. Chao Yu only answers that he did not notice anything, that he was just daydreaming. After this event, the next day, during the day, all the players leave their respective houses. Some players even thank that. Thanks to the paladin and Chao Yu, there was no major incident that night, and that everything went well. Another player, remembering that night, says that he still gets chills just remembering how scary that nightmare was. One of the players then starts saying that it wouldn't be a bad idea to stay close to Chao Yu. After all, he dealt with that nightmare monster with extreme ease. Another player also says that, besides that, before Chao Yu took action, the paladin defended the nightmare's charge masterfully. Her courage to face the monster head-on was simply amazing. Mafei, from afar, just watches that conversation attentively. Mafei, with a mocking face, starts to think that if he had been in the same house where that attack took place, he would also have been able to defeat the nightmare with ease, and that he would not let a girl tank all the damage as the paladin did, because hiding behind a girl is something no man would do. Still submerged in his thoughts, Mafei draws his sword, making a hero pose, and says that when he encounters a nightmare, he will finish it with just one blow. At that moment, Chao Yu and his friend arrive, seeing the class monitor making all that pose with the sword. Chao Yu then asks if he was going to do the morning training so early, that apparently he is really hardworking. Chao Yu's mage friend says that he is not impressed with Mafei, since he is the class monitor. So of course, he would be so hardworking, and because of that, he surpassed several players. Mafei then turns all shy, starts to cough, and says that it was nothing, that he was just practicing his sword skills. At that moment, the paladin approaches the group, so Mafei invites her to stay in the same house as him, that near him she would not need to tank any attack from any enemy. 
She just responds that it doesn't make sense, that if she is a paladin, then her function is to tank the enemy's damage. She even gave an example that if no one is going to tank the damage, how would he do it with just a sword? Mafei then explains that it wasn't quite what he implied. He meant that when facing an opponent like the Nightmare Monster, he could easily defeat it with a single blow, so the team's paladin would not need to be in danger by tanking the opponent. The paladin then responds that it is not nice for him to think that way, still reminding him of what the director said, that teamwork is extremely important, that he cannot go out wanting to do everything alone, that a good example was for him to learn from Xiao Yu. At that moment, Xiao Yu quickly turns hearing several voices saying, kill them all. At that moment, several people who look like the village chief appear, all of them shouting, don't let a single one escape, and also, tie them to a bonfire and let the flames burn their sins. The village chief, including, is one of these several people. He shouts ordering his people to kill all the players who resist. At that moment, the class monitor tries to intervene asking the village chief what was happening. Why was he saying that? He asked if there had been any misunderstanding. The village chief just replies that there is no misunderstanding and asks everyone if they were not aware of the good deed that some players did last night. At that moment, Chao Yu observes with concern those words from the village chief and starts to count how many villagers there are among them and realizes that the number of people is the same as that of players. Besides, the age seems not so different. Mafei then, responding to the village chief, says that he heard about what happened last night. Some players killed a nightmare monster. And what was the problem in killing a monster? The village chief then shouts at him to shut up. He says that those were the protective spirits of the nightmare village and that probably what happened was that some player broke some rule of the ones he mentioned the day before. So because of that, the protective spirits tried to punish everyone. The village chief, still with an angry face, continues saying that it was obvious that the protective spirits would be angry at everyone, and because of that, even the villagers would suffer along with them. Therefore he shouts saying that all the players must die a thousand times as a way to pay for this sin. Mafei, worried about how angry the village chief is, asks if there is any way to save a protective spirit if a player has killed it unintentionally? The village chief then explains that there is indeed a way. He informs that the person who angered the protective spirit must stay outside the house when night falls. After saying this, he asks which player will have that courage. Mafei is extremely worried about that. After all, it's impossible to know how many nightmares are in that nightmare village, and outside the houses there must be monsters worse than that nightmare. That said, Doing what the village chief was ordering would be suicide. At that moment, Chao Yu intervenes in the conversation, saying that enough was enough, and he told the village chief that it was he who killed the nightmare monster or protective spirit, whatever its name, so because of that, he would wait outside until nightfall. Mafei is astonished to hear Chao Yu say that. Mafei then turns to Chao Yu and asks if he has gone mad. He asked him to stop playing the tough guy because what he was asking for was suicide. Mafei, at the same time, already turns to the village chief and apologizes on behalf of Chiao Yu, saying that he was a bit dumb so the chief should not take seriously what he was saying. Chiao Yu then, full of confidence, asks the class monitor to stay calm, that he was not crazy for saying those things. After all, he also wants to test something, so it will be good if he stays outside at night, and if this test is successful, it might even help everyone to get out of that world. Not giving Chao Yu time to change his mind, the villagers grab and chain Chao Yu to a cross outside the houses. The players are shocked to see him tied up that way. The players then approach Chao Yu. Mafei asks what Chao Yu meant by that, a way for them to get out of that world. The paladin also asks if he discovered something related to the secret at the core of the village. Chao Yu, making a suspenseful face, just says maybe, and that tonight he will test. Then night falls. Everything around Chao Yu is deserted. There is only a terrifying green mist while he is under the light of the full moon. At that moment, a monster appears on the roof of one of the houses, and this monster walks towards Chiao Yu. The monster looked like the nightmare he had killed. The monster jumps with everything towards Chiao Yu's back. The protagonist just gives a smile looking to the side. Suddenly, a sand spell appears around the new nightmare monster, imprisoning it. Chiao Yu is surprised by that. It was Chiao Yu's friend who was using the imprisonment spell against the nightmare. He then shouts, asking Mafei to do something quickly, since his sand spell would only be able to hold the nightmare for a few seconds. At that moment, Mafei appears with his triumphant entrance, wielding his sword, saying that everyone should stay calm, that he will definitely save everyone like a true swordsman. After all, a man with a sword can conquer all enemies of this world. However, 
After arriving at the battle, he realizes that the Nightmare is acting strangely. At the same moment, the Nightmare strikes a blow at Mafei, who manages to block in time but is thrown far away. Mafei is startled by the speed of that Nightmare, which not only easily escaped the Sand Spell, but also delivered a blow with extreme speed. The Monitor still continues thinking if Chao Yu really defeated an opponent as powerful as a Nightmare monster, even being a Necromancer Mage. Mafei regains his breath and goes for the Nightmare, thinking that if Chao Yu managed to defeat one of those monsters, then he can too. As he approaches the monster, he delivers his defense break strike, causing only five damage to the nightmare monster. While Ma Fei is in combat against the monster, the healer and the paladin approach Chiao Yu. The protagonist then asks why they all left the houses. The paladin replies that they were afraid that Chiao Yu was in danger, and because of that, they all went out to help. That he could consider that as a kind of repayment for his help in defeating the first nightmare monster. The paladin tries to remove Chiao Yu's chains but without success. She then says that the one who could break those chains would be Mafei with his sword, but as he was in battle against the Nightmare Monster, he would not be able to do it. She wonders what she can do to help in that situation. After that, Chiyu just says that there is no need to do anything, and then breaks the chain with his own strength. The healer and the paladin can't believe what they just saw, a necromancer with such absurd physical strength that he can destroy chains with his own hand. Chiyu just says that now everything will be okay. Returning to Mafi's battle, the Nightmare Monster delivers a strong blow against him, but he dodges it successfully, albeit by a narrow margin. Everyone then runs to help him, the healer using her healing spells and the paladin running to be able to tank the monster's blows. Mafei, already extremely tired, just says that he doesn't need help, that true heroes need to fight alone, and that if scars arise on this journey, he should feel proud of it as a man. As the fight continues intensely, the Sand Mage shouts to Mafei, saying that he should not fight hand-to-hand -hand against the monster, that the monster's weak point is its head, so he should attack with everything in that area. The paladin also shouts, confirming what Xiaoyu just said, that she saw Xiaoyu finishing the monster by using his staff to attack its head. Ma Fei smiles, saying that he understood the instructions, and that he should have thought of that before. He starts attacking the monster like crazy, and even teases Xiaoyu, asking if he was still scared against that monster? He asks if he was afraid of Mafei surpassing him, and even mocks, saying that Xiao Yu needed team members to deal with a monster like that while he was managing to do it alone. Xiao Yu then only responds worriedly, saying that in fact, he was wasting time, since the nightmare monster's weak point was not its head. Before Xiao Yu can finish his sentence, Mafei raises his sword and says to watch his next blow carefully, because it will be the most beautiful blow they will see in their lives. With that, Mafei delivers a powerful blow through the monster's head, but causing only 10 damage to it, despite the powerful blow. Mafei turns to the monster scared to see that he didn't kill it, and starts to ask how the nightmare monster didn't die. After all, he hit its head squarely, which should be its weak point, so why was the monster still standing? Mafei starts yelling at the sand mage, asking if he is sure that the nightmare monster's weak point is the head, or if he was just trying to screw him. The paladin, surprised to see the monster still standing, says that something is wrong, that she is sure she saw Chiao Yu killing the monster with just one blow to its head. The Sand Mage, also surprised, says he knows what the problem was, the problem is the player, that Ma Fei is not as good as Chiao Yu, that's why he couldn't finish the monster. Ma Fei then fills with hatred in his heart, upon hearing the words, not as good as Chiao Yu. He starts to think about how a swordsman like him doesn't compare to a mere necromancer, that it wasn't possible. The paladin starts yelling at Mafei, asking him to retreat, after all. With the life he was at the moment, he could die with just one blow. The healer asks him to urgently retreat, because if he takes the next blow, he will die before she can heal him, and that he could leave everything in the hands of Chao Yu. Mafei, not paying attention to what everyone was saying, begins to gather energy for his next blow, while the nightmare monster jumps with everything towards him. At that moment, Mafei executes his defense-breaking blow, throwing the monster away with his several deadly cuts from the blow, but causing 30 damage to the monster. He then walks towards the monster, which is still lying on the ground with only 5 life points, and starts to think that he needs to kill that nightmare monster to then be recognized by everyone that he was not inferior to Chao Yu. Just as he finishes his sentence, Chao Yu comes with his staff and strikes the monster, causing 5 damage and finishing it off before Mafei could do it. Mafei then starts yelling at Chao Yu, outraged by what he just did, 
accusing him of stealing the monster's death brazenly. Chao Yu then picks up the stone that the monster left behind and praises Ma Fei, saying that he worked hard for the good of the team and that he deserved congratulations. Ma Fei, still very angry with Chao Yu, starts yelling, asking what he just did, that he was the one who finished the monster and that Chao Yu was just trying to steal his fame. Ma Fei can't control himself with what just happened and starts yelling, saying that it's good that everyone saw that it was he who defeated the monster and not Chao Yu that this brat stole his moment of fame. The healer and the paladin are frightened by Ma Fei's paranoia, so they just stay quiet, while the sand mage tries to calm him down, saying that he should forget about it, that it's over. At that moment, Chao Yu observes the stone that dropped from the monster, but nothing special was happening with it. At this moment, the players are startled when they look up. There were two nightmare monsters this time coming at them. Chao Yu then yells at the team, asking them to run to the house, since there was no need for them to put their lives at risk against those monsters, especially since he had an idea of how to get past that. Before the monsters could reach them, everyone enters the house, causing the nightmares to stay outside, unable to do anything. Upon entering, the paladin questions Chao Yu about the way to get past that he just mentioned. He then smiles, looking to the side, and says that tomorrow everyone will know, and when the time comes they should just listen to him. The next day, as soon as the players went outside their houses, they were greeted by the villagers' screams. Their chief starts yelling that the players are despicable, that the villagers gave the players a chance to redeem themselves, and yet they went and killed another protective spirit, and even yelled that all the players should disappear to hell because of that. The chief continues yelling, saying that they will not get through that day, now everyone will die otherwise it will be the end of the nightmare village. Chiao Yu then goes near the village chief and asks if all of them there were really residents of the Nightmare Village. The chief retorts saying that it was obvious they were residents there, they had been there for several generations, and that he should not come with that joke this time because his death was already certain. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell icon, and like the video. Thank you.